if the government can't print unlimited money, why can't it just print $34 trillion to pay its debt? The point is, right, the debt is money. The debt is money. And on top of that, the taxation, right, gives the money value. The heavy taxation on, on people, right, it gives them money value. Not only in the fact that you have to pay the government back the money, but also you have to provide, you have to, to, to use employees, you have to work hard, you have to spend time or people, man resources, to actually pay the taxes or file the taxes. This also generates more use case for the money. And so this is why they, they do this, right? All the debt is, is just another form of money, right? So when you say, well, they could just print it off and pay it or the debt, you're not looking at it correctly, right? Look at it like this. This is the money that they're printing, right? They can get, they can make more, right? Anytime they want, right? The, the dollars that you spend in the store, they can make that as much as they want. So people who save in, you know, treasuries, right? They, that's their money, right? Because the U.S. doesn't have to default. And they get the, 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 the payment of the interest on the debt, not through people, through taxation per se anymore. Um, the, the, you could say that that's where they pay off the, the debt holders, right? And it doesn't have to be the, right now, the debt is being held everywhere, right? Around the world, mostly in, mostly in this, this region of, of Dubai and the, the Arab state, Arab, Arab region, because that was the agreement back in 70s. And so, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just, all it is, is just, look at it this way. It's not real value. It, it, all it is, is just, oh, well, we'll move money around, move this, this, these dollars around, this, this, fake paper around so that it has value so long as it has movement so for example let me give you an example the only reason why these meme coins have value right is because of movement right if people are moving around the money with volume that gives it value right that's where it gets its value so the more reasons to own a particular asset other than just, you know, oh, I'm going to be able to buy something or make money from it, gives it its value. And that's why they uh, they do that. That's why they um, print and pay off their debt because they don't need to. And that would just be a disaster. The money would have no value. You mentioned that Satoshi might have destroyed his wallet private keys. Can a wallet be cracked without private keys? Here, let's pretend. I'll show you how it's done. How he did the wall, how he destroyed the private keys. Let's pretend that this new text document is my wallet.dat file. Right? So he just went into the, the folder, right, where his wallet is located, and he just hit delete. And that's that, right? Maybe empty his trash bin, and that's it. It's gone. Private key's gone. What else? There's nothing, there's no complex <laughs> work to do to delete your keys. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Can you be cracked without your private keys? Okay. No. If it's behind an address that you've never sent the cryptos, you sent Bitcoin from. If you did send Bitcoin from that address, technically in the future, one day, Someday, someone's going to take that public key, which you had to broadcast to everyone to see, and be able to take that public key and reverse it to get the private key. Right? That's, that hasn't happened yet, but that can happen in the future, and possibly even quantum computers might be able to do that, but I don't know. But that point in the future hasn't come yet. And so, yeah, you would have to have... Two things. One, the person has to have sent the some crypto from that address and then leave crypto on that address. And then someone has broken the, the encryption by taking a public key and creating a private key. However, 
if you have Bitcoin at a specific address and you haven't sent any Bitcoin out of that address, there's no public key to reverse. You're like, what? The public key is hidden through a hash system where you can't reverse it to get the public key. There's no way to reverse it. The results of reversing it will only produce quadrillions of results that you would have to test more than quadrillions, like, you know, a, v a number that's just irrelevantly large, right? That you wouldn't be able to figure out which one is the right key, right? So effectively, it's not possible, right? Because there's more than one answer to a hash, right? But you don't even know which one it's, what the answer is going to be. You have to guess it, and then you have to guess at them, right? There's no, because there's not enough data in the hash in order to reverse it and get what the value was, the original value, right? A lot of data was lost in the hashing process. All right, so that's, that's how it works. So there's no way, to, effectively, there's no way to get your public key. But first, you need to have a system in order to convert a public key into a private key. The wallet address is not a public key. It's a hash of the public key. That means it's a one-way encrypted value, meaning that you can't make out what the original data was from the outputted data that you received. You could only take the original data and convert it back to the hash value, and then you go, oh, yeah, that was the original data. Right? So, for example, you take your public key, you hash it, and then you get your address. Right? Then you know that the public key matches the address. But you can't go, oh, I got the public key, I'm going to convert it to an address, to a private, a public key. No, I got an address, I can't convert it back to a public key. So that's how it works. There's no way to do it. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Da Vinci, are, are there going to be, a, be able to manipulate the price of Bitcoin like they did with gold? Of course. Are whales already doing Bitcoin price manipulation? Yes. Like, for example, when you look at this, this trend analysis of Bitcoin, and I'm going to change screen, you can see that there's a clear trend here, and then all of a sudden it breaks it, breaks it above it, so it indicates that, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going higher, it's going higher, right? This is the kind of tactics they, they do, right? Because we've broken the trend. Look, the trend broken. Look, 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 on the higher time frames, which is very difficult to do. To get it past this, this area here was required a lot of strength, which they have, right? Because they have a printed press. And they, they, they did it, they held it above that, all the way here, and so they. This is part of the manipulation. Now, why do I say that? Well, because you can see that you know Ethereum doesn't do that, <laughs> right? <laughs> A lot of other coins don't do that, right? Uh, those now. This is normal in what's it called? I noticed that this is this kind of behavior where trends are are broken um, uh, heavily beyond the other side. So you can see. Like, for example, when you see this mostly in Forex. Okay. okay, that's it for today. Thank you for your questions, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.